What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. Oh guys, we've got something to talk about today that I really didn't think we'd be talking about today. But before we get into that, uh, first things first, first of all, like seven minutes of this video is me opening packs. I've sped it up a little bit because they're just packs and they're not live. Uh, I do pack something huge in these packs. We get a big walkout upgrade for the team, so I'm very happy with that. Um, I'm also going to start completing some League SBCs, actually. Well, I'm going to stop now because the road to the final players aren't in packs anymore. But whenever there's a good extra special team in packs, uh, so outside of the regular icons and regular team of the week, when there's also other promo players in packs, I'm going to carry on with the League SBCs because they're actually quite cheap right now. Uh, and especially the MLS. Uh, Piatti and Rooney are both fantastic players. Not amazing or anything, but in this next few months as we tone down the amount of FIFA we play, uh, we could definitely make use of those in our teams here or there. Um, and especially with uh, Martinez SBC, you know, putting Rooney up alongside him for an extra link could be really, really helpful for me. Um, so we're going to do uh, Piatti and Rooney, and it's 23 teams at, according to Footbin, a price of about 120 to 130,000 coins on PlayStation. Now, as you guys know, because of Bronze Pack Method and buying the players at the right time and stuff, you'll do that cheaper. With the amount of packs you get back and the fact that most of the packs are player-only packs, I, I would actually argue that you'd probably do the MLS right now for no cost or very, very little cost. You know, 20 to 40,000 coins if you're super unlucky in your packs uh, and you get Rooney and Piatti. And I'm going to do it twice. I'll do it twice over. Um, so we're going to be doing that periodically throughout the coming weeks. Um, the other thing I just wanted to talk about, obviously, with this being New Year's Eve, maybe for some of you it's already New Year's Day. It's already 2019. By the time you're watching this, maybe just because you're watching this on New, or, you know, on New Year's Day, or because of the country that you're in, might already be in the New Year's. Um, but I just wanted to give a massive thank you to you guys for uh, an absolutely incredible year. You know, um, this series, this channel in general was actually created for me to be able to upload different games. You know, I play a lot of other games, a lot of app games, games like Fortnite, Diablo, League of Legends, all of the other new games that might have come out, like Spider-Man and stuff like that. that. This channel was created for that. But as somebody who primarily just loves FIFA and plays FIFA more than any other game, we started doing the Road to Glory on this channel, and, and it quickly become like a cult hit. And uh, I put so much time and energy and effort into this channel, and you guys have been absolutely amazing with watching all the videos. Um, I, I'm not perfect by any means, you know, I make mistakes along the way. Uh, my opinions on FIFA and on the game change a lot throughout the year. Uh, you know, I, I know we take a lot of comments on board, and, and that causes some controversy at times. But ultimately, uh, I think just a, a massive thank you to you guys for supporting me for yet another year in this industry is absolutely unreal. You know, uh, th this industry is so volatile. And you never know as a content creator whether you're the biggest hit one day or not. You just never know what tomorrow brings. You know, you, you don't know like with Article 13 or Adpocalypse or YouTube algorithms or FIFA in general. You never know what's to come. So the fact that we're through another year uh, is amazing. When, when I started on this journey of, of a, being a FIFA YouTuber, specifically full time, constantly say to like AA, you know, constantly saying like... Um, Dude, if we could just say it for one more year, how amazing would that be? And back in 2013 and 2014, when I started kind of like coming up through the ranks on YouTube, uh, never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined that leading into 2019, I'd have nearly 2 million subs on a main channel, nearly half a million subs on a second channel, nearly half a million subs on a Twitch channel, uh, you know, nearly a million followers on Twitter and half a million followers on Instagram. Those, those are like the, the targets I'm, I'm nearly at. So maybe, maybe 2019 might be a massive milestone year for me in terms of hitting like a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of goals and a lot of achievements. But um, yeah, I never, never thought in my wildest dreams it would turn into this. And as much as I complain and moan about the certain aspects of this game, and as much as I sometimes complain and moan more about the game than I give it credit for the times where it's good, um, I'm very grateful for this game. I'm very grateful for EA as a company to allow me uh, to use their game to be able to do what I do. And I'm very grateful for YouTube and the viewers, specifically you guys, you know, to, uh, to allow me to be a full-time content creator. With that being said, what I've seen from EA today has left me absolutely lost for words. Like, I genuinely don't know how to process what has happened today. So, first and foremost, Futmus was billed as being bigger and better this year because it's going to be lead it's it's until the 31st of December until until the 25th of December this year so they've added an extra week of Futmus and in that extra week of Futmus we've had the league upgrade packs the team of the week packs and literally nothing else in terms of content 
Um, you know, there was a few good things during the December month. Uh, the two weekly objective players I thought were both very, very good. Uh, you know, obviously that Martinez is very, very good. I uh, can't even remember who the other weekly objective player was, so he can't have been that good. But there was two weekly objectives that were, were good. And uh, I think it brought some fun back for the, the community. I enjoyed using the MLS team for the Martinez. I enjoyed using the silver team, was it? What was the silver team for? I can't even remember what we got for the silver team. Um, but using the silver team... Was that for the MLS? I can't remember. Anyway, you guys know what it was. It's, it's so hard to remember absolutely everything all the time when you're not prepared. Um, but yeah, bottom line is, is uh, it was fun to play for the players. You know, playing for players, I think, gives an, an air of uh, brilliance. But obviously, you know, this game is heavily geared around content. Now, the, the whole gameplay thing aside, because I think gameplay should be a very important thing in FIFA to talk about. And I think we should make more noise about how bad the gameplay is in general and how boring the game is. But we'll get to that when we go to the comments. Um, but in terms of content, the Fatmus has been terrible. The, the packs, the promo packs have been there plentiful sometimes two or three times a day on one under eight hour refreshes instead of 24 hour refreshes which sh you know i don't blame ea for that in some regards because hey it's christmas a lot of people get the game a lot of people have a lot of disposable income over christmas ea are a business they're trying to make money i can respect that i can understand that completely what i can't understand is why they made the Fatmas player sbcs j just genuinely terrible uh you know i know a lot of people agree disagree with me here um but if you actually look at previous years and then even just generally SBCs this year, the cost price of most of the Futmus SBCs versus the cost price of much better SBCs that we've had throughout this year, they were an utter coin sink. They were, they were simply designed to get you to just pile your coins into them, probably in preparation for team of the year so that you're like, oh God, I've, you know, I've spent 700,000 on five Futmus cards that I never use and now team of the year's around the corner, better buy some FIFA points. That, that's, that's where it went for in, in that regard, in my opinion. Um, but outside of that, there's just been no content other than that. A few SBCs here and there. There was no Futmus bundle like we had last year. There was no daily SBCs like we had last year. Uh, last year, we also got um, End of an Era Perlo, uh, which we didn't get anything of the sorts this year. And just generally speaking, last year, it was amazing. Now, this is my last game of Foot Champs that we're, that we're watching. Um, obviously, I want to show you guys another full game with Hullet. This was a really tough game. I finished 16-2 and two on the weekend. This was my 18th game. Um, some people will be like, why not just play to gold too? I, I just I just didn't want to. It was like 3 o'clock in the morning. I played this game because I was testing out something with the tactics and the formations. And so I want to show you the whole thing. I want to show you how I was playing as well because I was, this guy was really good. I actually messaged him after the game saying, GG, what's your record? Uh, after I beat him, he went to 20-3. and three. So whilst playing this guy here, he was 20 wins and 2 losses. And uh, I was actually, I was so happy uh, that his record was so good at the end. And, and I wished him good luck in getting Elite 1 because... Playing with my team, with Martinez and Lacazette and, and playing with, uh, you know, this new camera angle and, and playing under no pressure, I was able to play a comfortable game um, and win a game, which I do win this game, against somebody who is an extremely high caliber of player. And I tell you, that made me, th just, that just made me happy that I am actually still performing to a high level on FIFA because the fact that I bottled Elite a couple of weeks and the fact that last week I, I literally finished... Uh, gold three on purpose i do wonder if my skill level slips a little bit and uh fortunately enough it seems like it hasn't or maybe i just had a lucky game i don't know um but i've been trying a lot of new things tactically and, and in terms of like my play style and, and i want to try and uh, like kind of maneuver my play style and change my play style around a little bit and uh this is me sharing that game with you uh however back to ea guys so it's, it's new year's eve um and i'm not I, I, as i say i'm not expecting miracles i'm not expecting ea to give us you know 10 icons or 99 Ronaldos or anything like that. But give us content that we can engage in, that we can enjoy, that, that is actually rewarding. You know, the flashback SBCs, I think, so far have been absolutely brilliant. Every single one of them has, has been a, a great, usable player. Um, I, I think certain uh, other player SBCs have been very good. You know, the Jonathan Tarr SBC, as uh, as much of a, an ache it was to get the 83 Tarr, has, has been, was fun. You know, you get an 83 Tarr and then you complete an actual team SBC and you get a big live item. More stuff like that and, and more stuff like the Martinez SBC and the Parolo SBC playing for, you know, playing for him. More stuff like that would be very, very welcome in this game. Because right now, with, with gameplay being how it is, um, the, the fact that this is a finesse shot simulator, um, it, it's, it's, it's super, super unrewarding to, to play this game on a game-to-game -game basis. So playing for 
something is is great and and when you play foot champs and when you play foot rivals you are effectively playing for something but you're also not what you're playing for when you play rivals or when you play champs is you are playing for the chance of getting something but when you're playing for Parolo or when you're playing for that Jonathan Tarr or Martinez or whoever the player may have been you are playing for the specific player and so there you know when you need to win nine games or seven games or a game with this team or a game with that team you're always building towards knowing what you're getting at the end of it so there's it's worth it in my opinion um which is why i think it was more enjoyable for me uh, to do those player S player objectives than it was to do any kind of fuck champs run in any way, shape, or form. Um, with that being said, something happened today with EA, and it has left me absolutely bewildered. If you go onto your FIFA 18 right now, you will get a prime icon pack that will give you four prime icons. It will give you prime icon Shevchenko, Desai, Van der Sar, and Laudrop. And they are all 91 rated, which if you flip that around is 19. And uh, it, it, when you get the pack, it's like, thank you for your continued uh, time on the game. You know, maybe head over to FIFA 19 and, and build a squad. Here's four prime icons. And it, it, it just, I, I don't get it. I, I literally don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't understand why they would give four prime icons on a game that hasn't had any updates to any content in four months. So sure, there will be some people that still play FIFA 18 because they don't have FIFA 19 yet and they just love FIFA. But there's no weekend league, there's no daily knockout tournament, there's no promo packs, there's no live SBCs, there's no, there's no updates to that game at all. You could just play seasons, I think, or singles. There's no tournaments or anything like that. So to give everybody on that game four prime icons, it, it, it's baffling to me. I, I, I literally don't understand the concept. But m more importantly, to give content on a game that is four months finished and doesn't get any more like updates or any more kind of like support or anything like that and then to not give content on a game that millions of people would have just got for christmas i don't i, I genuinely guys i don't know i i I'm, i i a lot of the times with everything ea do I can, I can understand it. I, even, even if I don't agree with it and I, I don't think that it's necessarily the right thing for their business, I can understand their business decisions and I can respect that. You know, as I say, dropping loads of promo packs, I can understand the business decision for that. This one, I, 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 I literally, I can't understand it. I, I'm, this is like me going back to my FIFA 18 videos, grabbing comments from them and talking about that in a FIFA 19 video, you guys would be like, what, why are you, what are you doing? Why are you talking about FIFA 18 in this video? It doesn't make sense. There, there's no topic of conversation here. It's a, it's a very similar sort of thing. That there's, just, there's no reason for EA to give us four prime icons on FIFA 18 and nothing on FIFA 19. EA have such an opportunity for great content on this game and they, uh, they just don't go anywhere with it. But... That what I've learned a lot this year as well, because I, th this has been a big eye-opening year for me in many regards. Specifically, December actually, specifically, Futmus um, has been a big eye-opener for me. But FIFA 19 has actually been a big eye-opener for me because we got a lot of the things that we did ask for. Me specifically, we got an Elo-based uh, matchmaking ranking system. We got a division system that offers considerably better rewards and 15,000 coins. Um, you know, we, we got uh, foot champs no longer punishes you for playing in terms of monthly rewards for not playing a week you no longer get punished by missing out on massive monthly rewards uh, the number of games for foot champs has been reduced the fact that you had to previously qualify by winning four games in a row which was impossible for a lot of people that's been removed and now foot champs is literally open to everybody and there is just a small barrier for entry of getting the 2000 foot champs qualification points ea have given us a lot of what we asked for this year but as always with ea it goes from one end to the other and there's no middle ground and I think that's what we want. But more importantly is it has showed me this year that <clears throat> what we want is the ability to play a fun game. It's, 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 it's less about the rewards and it's less about uh, f you know foot champs and it's less about having an even based matchmaking system. and it, It's more about having a game that's actually fun to play. And in my experience over the last few years, especially with how social gaming has changed, a game that's fun to play is a game that you can play with your friends. And so it's sad for me that you can't play Ultimate Team with your friends unless they are sat next to you on the same console. And it's sad to me that the other game mode that you can play with your friends 
specifically pro clubs has not had any changes made to it pretty much since FIFA 11. They're, they've changed a few little things here or there for keeping up appearances, but it is the core game mode that was there in FIFA 11. Uh, and even FIFA 10, a little bit of a change from FIFA 10 to FIFA 11. But they, they haven't updated or upgraded that game mode. They haven't put any resources into that game mode for a long time. Career mode is a game mode that EA could change and, and improve drastically and allow you to play with people. Even in Ultimate Team, they could add game modes within Ultimate Team that allow you to play with friends. They could literally add a five-a-side game mode. And what you do is you go into a five-a-side game mode. You you know you have to have four, four four other friends. You have to have a full lobby of people. You each take one of your ultimate team players, whoever that may be, just your favorite player, and you play in five v fives. And you get just nominal rewards for it, you know, because obviously this people people probably wouldn't play for it for fun. But what I say by nominal rewards doesn't necessarily have to be packs or coins. In fact, it would be much preferred if it wasn't packs and coins. What I would like as rewards in something like that would be again players or just other cosmetics give me a brand new stadium that i can't get in regular fifa ultimate team that you have to achieve by unlocking certain things in the five side game mode give me new kits that you can get out of there give me new balls that you can get out of that give me give me cosmetic items you know G give me cosmetic items for other game modes within fifa you know for the journey you get another unlockable character when you put when you do a certain thing in uh, a five side game mode you know give give us something to play for that's not the chance at getting something and i think that's what the, the a lot of the problem in the game is but the, the i think as i say the biggest problem for for this game right now is the fact that you can't play it with friends i would love to be able to do draft to glory and each episode have a new youtuber on and some episodes have a viewer on but like, all right guys today me and my viewer are going to build a draft me and one of you guys are going to build a draft then we're going to play in the draft and we'll see what we get that would be entertaining it would be engaging it like it would be fun to play with different people and have different perspectives and you just can't do that you just can't do that so i think uh, i think i think the money machine of ultimate team is ea have, have, have kind of like gone so close so far towards we've got to rinse this cash cow dry that the, the, they are they are really just killing off their own game and and I know it was about this time last year where the whole the game is dead meme for FIFA 18 came around right um, I don't think this game is dead per se I, I I do enjoy this game a lot like there is a lot of positives in FIFA 19 um, but in terms of like actually playing the game one of the biggest chores as I say one of the biggest chores for FIFA 19 is that you you just got everything is just you on your own you just you know when you play this game. Oh, 20, 20 weekend league games to go, 10 weekend league games in a setting. That's three hours of you just sat there on your own in, in this intense pressure situation. Give us a game mode where we can play with our friends. The hours will fly by. We'll love the game. There will still be gameplay problems. There will still be content issues. There will still be the same old nonsense in FIFA that you get year in, year out. But you'd be able to share those problems and those frustrations and those enjoyments and, and such with your friends. And I would love to see that. Sadly, I don't know if we're going to see that. And... Uh, that's sad. But I do want to move on to some comments. I, I, I kind of just want to end on the fact that I, I am still truly, truly baffled as to why EA gave four prime icons on FIFA 18 with, with seemingly just no context at all. And they gave nothing in FIFA 19. It's very weird. Uncreative Name says, I think we're playing FIFA for rewards only and not for fun. Any ideas on how EA can incorporate social gaming into FIFA more? I genuinely like playing friendlies more than weekend league. Um, we kind of just touched on this a little bit, I guess. Um, yeah, th I mean, they, they could add 2v2 game modes in Ultimate Team. They could add a pro clubs style game mode in Ultimate Team. Um, you know, uh, they could just add, like what Pez has, in Pez you can play with up to three players, right? So what will happen is, like me, Bates and Marshall used to play Pez when the game first came out earlier on in the year. And we'd go into a game against other another group of two or three players. And it will pick a random number of your team for the team. So it will take six of my players, six of Bateson's players, and six of Marshall's players. If you had three people, and if you only have two people, it would take nine of my players and nine of the other person's players. And then you guys build a team out of that. And then you play against your opponent. It's fun. It's lots of fun. But there, there are so many social aspects of FIFA that EA could add in. It's, I, I just don't know whether they will. I, I don't know whether they will. Next comment is from 
Pikey Lad, he said, anyone else remember when Nep's best piece of advice for getting better in like FIFA 17 was to spam offline games and skill games until you were foot champs ready? Only the true OGs remember. Um, yeah, isn't it funny? Because the, co the comment yesterday came in that how do you get better at the game this year? And I think this year the best thing to do is to spam rivals and learn from your mistakes. Because what a lot of people tend to do is play a game, whether they're the better opponent or the worse, better player or the worst player, they will just immediately ignore things that were good or bad in the game and just say this game's bad that's why i lost and there's definitely something to be said for understanding what works in a game and th there's a lot of content creators out there that do tutorials and stuff but what almost nobody does which i think we try to portray in this series is nobody really un explains how and why the different gameplay patterns and mechanics past an individual skill move or an individual shot type are important and so, for example, when I play the game, when I try a new tactic, everyone just says, what tactic is that? I want to use it. That shouldn't be the outlook. The outlook should be like, why are you trying that tactic? How does it change in game and, and how do you improve? And one thing that I've got from watching a lot of people is that my, my, my attacking play is nowhere near as good as it used to be. My, my attacking play used to be my kind of... Um, my strong point, actually, in FIFA 17, in FIFA 18, and, and before Foot Champs even existed, you know, in FIFA 16 and before, one of the greatest things about my gameplay was always how good I was going forwards. And I love the fact that no matter what happened, I, I know I'd always score goals. Whether I was up against someone like Huge Gorilla or whether I was up against your random Joe Blogs in Weekend League, I know I will score goals because I'm good. This year... Because this game really focuses on finesse shots, timed finesse shots as a, as a primary way of scoring, all the intricacies that I used to do a lot, I've, I've forgotten. Like, or, or at least the muscle memory is no longer there. You know, so in terms of like setting myself up for bicycle kicks and things like that, now I have to think about them again instead of it just being a natural thing for me. And I don't like that at all. And so when I was watching a few other people over this weekend league... Um, I was noticing a few things that they were doing in terms of their attacking play that now I want to implement into my game that will hopefully help me become a better player. Um, and nobody explains that side of the game to people. No, nobody explains, all right, so time finesse shots are the most overpowered broken game mechanic in the game this year, and so everyone tries to abuse gate that mechanic. But what we need videos on and, and what we need to help people with is when you lose a game 2-1 to a guy that hit two long shots, but you battered, there there are the rare occurrences where their goalkeeper just made like some wonder saves you know like some absolute wonder saves and you're like wow if we actually played 10 more times i'd probably win 10 10 of those games but so many of the opportunities that you would have had in those games where you lose a game and you feel like it's undeserved you could have still won that game if you just learned the patterns of play better and to do that, you have to be able to watch your games back or know what you're looking for. And there's no real way to do that in FIFA because the lack of an opportunity to watch your replays back. Like this game right here, if I was unable to record this game, I would never be able to watch this game back. I watched this game back last night just after I played because I, I wanted to see what this guy did that, that kind of made him a 20-win, 2-loss player before I played him. And... Uh, one of the things that I mostly was looking out for is when he was defending, because I always felt uh, pressured against this guy. Like, as soon as I had the ball offensively, I felt like I had like, very few options. And so what I noticed was is that he, could, he continually picked uh, a player and ran them to cover a pass option. But instead of staying there, which is what I would do, when I defend, I'll, I will cover the pass that I think you're going to make. And I'm, I'm an all or nothing kind of guy in that regard. I'm like, if you don't make this pass, I've probably given you some space over there. But what he would do is he would manually run someone into that pass avenue. He'd then pick somebody else and run them into another pass avenue and then pick someone else and drop them back into another space. And he kept, he continually maneuvered his defense to block out spaces. And I don't do that. So I learned from him. I learned from him. Even though I beat this guy, I, I learned from him that I need to be more active and, and more apparent in the way I'm defending instead of just hoping that marking one space out and letting the AI do the rest is going to be enough. Um, but I did have lots more comments, guys. But as per usual, I've just talked myself into a, into a, into a time zone. And uh, we're going to be at the end of the video for now. So thank you again for an amazing year. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'm out. Peace.